Assalamu alaikum and hello. I would like to welcome all our viewers from Qatar, the United States, and all around the world. My name is Fatma Dosare, the Executive Director of the Qatar America Institute for Culture. We're a Washington, D.C. based nonprofit organization that creates, curates, and executes programs and research that is focused on arts and culture from Qatar, the United States, and the larger Arab and Islamic world. We're very happy today to welcome you to our first virtual expression series where we host experts and creators and creatives who have been inspired and influenced by the by Qatar and the uh, larger Arab and Islamic world. And of course, our expert today is the director of the uh, Museum of Islamic Art in Qatar, Dr. Julia Ganella. Dr. Julia is a scholar of Islamic art and archaeology. She authored or edited 10 books and over 40 articles, including exhibitions, catalogs such as Syria Matters. And um, that was an, an, an exhibition for the Museum of Islamic Art, or MIA's 10th year anniversary. Uh, without further ado, I would like to welcome Dr. Julia. Uh, to give us her presentation. And I would like to also welcome our viewers to post their questions that we will encourage um, on asking and discussing with Dr. Julia after her presentation. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Fatma Dosari, and thank you very much for the Qatar America Institute for Culture. And uh, it is a great pleasure to be one of the first, probably, for this coming upcoming year of culture to present for, definitely for Mia, it's, uh, it's the launch of a um, longer collaboration. Uh, and I really look forward to presenting you today about the plans of the Museum of Islamic Art. Um, I'd like also uh, say, as this is the um, first occasion for this year of culture, um, that we are also very happy to announce the collaboration with the Freer Gallery uh, in a joint exhibition on textiles with Masumi Farhad uh, for the upcoming year at the end of the year. So um, that's really great news. I just, this is news just from like half an hour ago. So that I wanted to share. Um, yes, maybe I should start with the um, with the Bildschirm freigeben. Yeah, with <laughs> um, let me see. Can you can you see this? Okay. Um, uh, as we discussed, this is not a very very long presentation, and it's a presentation for several people. I've already seen that some of the um, participants are uh, friends and colleagues. Um, so actually, when I uh, forwarded yesterday, I added a few pictures at the end, uh, because I think they might be especially interested in the relaunch pictures. Um, but I'd like to just start um, um, with a few old pictures uh, for those people who do not know the Museum of Islamic Art, uh, and then introduce some of the programs we had over the last years and then end up with some images of the relaunch. So the Museum of Islamic Art is really the Museum of Islamic Art in this entire region, as most of my colleagues definitely know. Um, when it was uh, opened uh, 12 years ago, it was a big bang for this entire region. It was the big, big museum uh, building um, and it gave a big stir. I remember very vividly, although I haven't been to the opening, that everyone talked about it. Everyone wanted to go and participate at the opening. And it was, you know, it was, of course, the first of a series. Nowadays, we have more big museums in our neighborhood, of course, in Abu Dhabi and Saudi Arabia, but even in Qatar itself with the new National Museum and the Qatar National Library. So when this museum was built, of course, for those who do not know, um, it's, um, it's a spectacular building. And I have to say, working in this museum is already something special. Um, my grandfather was an architect, and he always told me, if you uh, want to judge not modern architecture, you um, need to feel comfortable in this. And uh, this is exactly what it is. You Each day, you come into this building, you think, my god, that's so beautiful here. And it has a big impact on people 
visiting, but also on people um, working there. Um, it was, of course, uh, it's, the, it's the masterpiece of uh, the architect Ian Pei, who only died last year, actually, with 100 years, 100 years old or a little 101 years old. And when he built it, um, he had actually, he had uh, three stipulations, uh, three stipulations, one stipulation, he wanted to decide uh, the, the site of Qatar, uh, that was a big thing because before they had a different architecture, then they went to Impai. There is a long story behind this. And uh, this was his best choice because he just um, decided for the for the Corniche and with the, I go back to the other building with this view to the other side. Uh, it was, the, of course, the first museum and on Islamic art, he said it needs to be like in between old Doha and no, new Doha. So it was... Um, um, uh, yeah, so the site is, is perfect. Uh, uh, you couldn't be better in, um, in, in Doha. And so, of course, you see all these buildings at the back, the West Bay, that when this museum was built, of course, were not there. Yes, this is the only view. This is an old picture of Qatar, uh, of the Museum of Islamic Art, uh, when, it wasn't, when it was just finished. And you see the park around it, which nowadays, of course, is all green and it has food trucks in it and it has a cafe that has the sculpture of uh, Richard Serra at its end. Uh, the Museum of Islamic Art in Doha is um, unlike the one in Berlin, also, it's in the water, but it's not on an island. It actually was built in the water. That um, uh, it was quite an uh, engineering feat uh, to do so. So here you see a more recent picture. Uh, I have to say that my photographers at Mia they always like to present Mia without any person in it. It's quite amazing. Um, uh, so uh, normally this park, and of course now before uh, Corona, uh, this was a very busy place, and we used to have the bazaar here every Sunday and, um, and people come and have picnics and etc. So this is from the back side and you see this beautiful big window which gives light into the atrium and you also see the windows of the library. Um, the museum uh, also, yes, I forgot to say this is uh, the museum itself is the main building and then it has the uh, annex, which is for the education, which is extremely important because from the beginning onwards, uh, the learning and outreach department always played a big role for for this museum. You see, it was from the beginning. This is um, uh, it, it's one of the missions, vision and missions of this museum that you really need to have a big side program. So this is a couple of uh, views on the courts. There are these two beautiful courts. And you, again, you see this sites with, the, with West Bay on the other side. This is uh, the interior. Again, there, this is an empty one. I show you the fuller one later on. And, um, but just to, to, to uh, see, because the second stipulation that Ian Pai was uh, having was that he wanted to travel through the Middle East. He has been, had been working in the US and he had been working Europe and, and in, in the Far East, of course. And so he traveled, uh, you know, I think definitely he traveled to um, Egypt and Istanbul. And you can see the colleagues definitely can see the influences of, of, the, uh, of the Ottoman architecture with this big, um, newly made with this big chandelier or these little domes at the sides. You can also see the black and use of black and white stones, which is a reference more to Syrian uh, Jordanian architecture. And um, of course, there's a lot of modern architecture um, in this. Just for, for the space, uh, the galleries. Uh, so you have a ground floor and uh, which includes a cafe. And then you have the first and the second floor, which are the galleries with the exhibition. And then you have a fourth floor, which has temporary galleries. And this is, of course, uh, you know, this is this view to the dome that uh, apparently was uh, inspired by um, the uh, Ibn Tulun Mosque, the fountain, which is which is in there. And I mean, it's it's a gorgeous architecture. I don't think you can um, compare with anything else. And I have to say, I'm very biased on this. It's uh, still much more beautiful than any other building um, in this region. Yes, then for those, uh, of course, uh, also um, people know that the collection of the Islamic Art Museum is, uh, is quite ast uh, astounding and it uh, parallels 
with many of the other big, great museums of Islamic art. The Museum of Islamic Art in Doha is, um, uh, is, is the first museum that covers the entire Islamic art in this region. If you have other museums in the region, like Istanbul, uh, it's more Ottoman art or uh, Turkish art uh, or the Islamic art museum in Cairo. You have, um, it's more Mamluk art, Egyptian art. So this is a museum that from the beginning when it was founded, they wanted to present, uh, I mean, it was based on more Western museums. You had art, Islamic art from Spain to India or so uh, even beyond. Uh, in this museum. So they, the, the collection when it was uh, uh, started in the 90s by Sheikh Saud um, in the name of the father Emir, um, you know, he collected mostly on the art market. I mean, not mostly, uh, completely on the art market. This is of course a difference to museums in let's say the Louvre or the British Museum or the Berlin Museum that have also a large archeological uh, artifacts, uh, which we don't. So our objects are masterpieces. It's a collection of masterpieces and uh, they are sort of very well known uh, in the world. Um, still, you, it's interesting when you take a step apart um, uh, because some people said that really the Museum of Islamic Art, they just, uh, when they bought it, they just buy it sort of the greatest and the most famous pieces. I think still there is, um, there are certain interests in this museum, and one, for example, is, is the, of course the Qurans. The Museum of Islamic Art has a very good collection of uh, early but also later Qurans, both uh, uh, leaves and also, of course, full manuscripts. Uh, uh, I think it's uh, uh, it's very astonishing, and uh, in our new uh, relaunch, we will we'll have a very beautiful new one from Baghdad. But I don't show you this now because I, I want to save this for later on. Then, of course, people know the uh, Qabur Bas, the uh, Museum of Islamic Art has a strong collection actually on Mamluk art, both with metal work and glass. And this, of course, is one of the most famous glass pieces uh, existing uh, when it was sold to uh, people. In fact, the, it was so beautiful and so well um, kept that they thought uh, uh, this was 19th century or more maybe even fake, but um, uh, everyone now agrees that uh, this is, a, is an old piece and it's, it's of course, uh, it's astonishing. Then this is a new uh, collection because another strong collection, um, actually the carpets I should mention, I haven't shown a carpet, I'm now showing the textiles. Uh, Museum of Islamic Art has a very uh, strong collection on carpets and textile. This one is uh, early piece uh, from a jacket from Iran, uh, which uh, uh, has sort of increased our uh, Iranian um, part, especially for the early period with its uh, reference to the pre-Islamic period. Um, the museum has also uh, a very good uh, conservation department for textiles. Um, this is actually also due to uh, the um, uh, to Michael Francis, uh, of course, who has been always a very close advisor of this museum. Then in addition, and the last one, which is also, and this is something which is not only for special for the Museum of Islamic Art, we um, also, it, it's something which is very typical for the whole peer, for this whole region, uh, people very interested in, in jewelry, in, in, in South Asian jewelry. And um, this is uh, due to the close connection, in fact, to South Asia uh, and uh, also, in fact, to the uh, strong links that uh, South Asian jewelry had also on, on the local jewelry. And uh, there was this very strong influence, even, you know, in the sort of last century, basically, where, where with all the stones uh, highly influenced uh, the local market. And um, I'll come back to you in a minute about this as well. So the, the third stipulation, the third stipulation was that the, uh, that Wim, um, Ian Pei, the architect, decided on, on the interior designer. And the interior designer is a French company called Villemot. Uh, they, they worked together when they were working in Paris on the, on the Louvre pyramid and uh, they had very good relations. And of course, Wilmot was super famous uh, for their very, um, how can I say, is a very, uh, very strict design, a very strong design. I personally think it's ex 
extremely beautiful. Uh, you see the showcases. I think they were the best and the modern, most modern showcases at the time. Um, you can also see how the, the objects are displayed. They are all displayed as masterpieces. One object in one showcase. It's the contrary, um, as we have one curator who worked with us, uh, who worked before in the Victoria and Albert Museum. I mean, she is, she, it took her a little while to get used to this concept because, of course, this is the opposite where you have sort of thousands of objects in one showcase. And so here, every object is, is celebrated. And maybe this is, um, you know, this is funnily enough. And, and when I now hear people talk about this, is this is something which uh, quite a few people were, um, they liked it because of the, its beauty. But very soon they realized um, that it's only about beauty. You see here, you see, for example, our carpet. And please, you know, don't look at this red uh, bench. This is, of course, more of a security solution rather than a uh, Wilmot solution. Uh, but you can see here that, of course, all these uh, the, these carpets uh, and, and the objects are displayed uh, in as singular, but without any history or not. There is no storyline. Uh, people ask about the context, uh, uh, of course, nowadays. Uh, and um, the reason for this is that um, I think maybe in the last 10 years, out of all uh, the view of how museums, what museums should be, how they should be presented, what's the role has changed uh, amazingly. Uh, uh, I think more than all the 60, 70 years before. Uh, so museums from sort of, sort of well-kept, beautiful places with you know, beautiful objects, uh, people want to learn about this. And this is maybe true more in Qatar than everywhere else, because you have a lot of young people and it's, it's a big uh, effort from this country to teach the young people. So uh, it's nice, yes, you can go in and have a look at the carpets and get heart beating uh, because they are so beautiful, but you also want to learn how they were made, where do they come from, what's the, what the significance of these carpets or this glass, what's the, the history of the glass. And uh, so this is why, you know, um, uh, there have been a lot of changes. And maybe for this, I'd like to um, talk a little bit about that Qatar changed also. It's not only museum world changed, that also Qatar changed a lot. So Qatar has been growing immensely. And this is just one picture of one, uh, area in the north of Qatar is a newly made uh, building. The Pearl is a residential area, but there are many, many more and they grow by the minute. Even in these three years, three and a half years I've been living here in Qatar, it seems like it has doubled. Um, uh, so uh, then, of course, Qatar also has been changing. And I remember myself that when I first visited Qatar and at that time, um, Oliver Watson was the director and it, you know it, it, it was a very quiet place in fact and uh, he often uh, even got bored in the evenings because you don't you know that nothing happened now Qatar has changed immensely it's 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 busy before corona i have to say i hope it changes back again that it's busy it's young you have lots of places where you can go to many things happening they have this beautiful new Qatar library they have this amazingly important education city, which of course was founded uh, at the same time, basically, at the museum and has evolved into a very busy university scene. And they brought universities uh, from America, uh, VCU, for example, Virginia Commonwealth University or Texas University, and um, but also uh, from other places and and you see, the, um, the, it was the vision of especially the Sheikha Moza, the wife of she, uh, the father, Emir, who really wanted uh, um, to have people educated. Uh, there is a lot of drive in this. And honestly, when you work here, uh, you find this extremely um, inspiring, I have to say. Uh, this is something, you know, there is a lot of energy behind it. Just you want to do something, you want to change something, and um, you want to build a future. And of course, uh, this part is all very important because Qatar mainly, as you all know, that is, um, is based on, uh, the, the economy is based on oil and gas, but you, you need to have a few vision for the future, how you can add to this. And, uh, and this is an extremely important part. 
And then finally, also, there is a big change uh, that uh, before Corona, there were many, many tourists um, uh, coming. And uh, the, you see in 2017, 2018, and 2019, we had these cruise ships arriving. And you see the, the number, the growth just in the last three years, basically. We had some days with 7,000 visitors per day. Uh, of course, totally different to when the museum was open. And then last but least, of course, I need to mention the, the World Cup, uh, which it, um, keeps everyone busy here in Qatar. Uh, we have, I don't know how many new um, uh, stadiums. Uh, one is more exciting, by the way, than the other. Uh, honestly, this is a very great architecture. And of course, we expect uh, uh, at least one and a half million uh, visitors. Um, now, the whole thing is changed with Corona, I have to say, it is, it's like a stop, but this is, of course, is not only in, in Qatar, but it's, uh, it's in the rest of the world. So Mia, two, 12 years later, and you see, this is now I found a picture with lots of people in there. Um, you see that we had, in fact, an increase of visitors, um, more than 20 percent. Um, uh, over the last two years and with more than 500,000 visitors per year. And as I have a couple of my German friends listening, this is more visitors uh, than any Berlin Museum, for example, uh, except the Pergamon, of course. So it is, it is quite amazing. Uh, as a director, of course, uh, I, I say this is partly due to the programming of our exhibitions, for example, and um, we had uh, some very successful exhibitions like the Syria Matters exhibition, for example, uh, where we talked about uh, yeah, Syria from the ancient Near East to the Ottoman period and beyond with 100,000 visitors. Uh, this is a picture of you know, one of the tours. Uh, then we had also very successful uh, exhibition set in stone with gems and jewels from the Royal Indian Courts that was not on for so long. This was, by the way, a year of culture. Uh, exhibition for the Year of Culture India, and um, and it showed some of you know this was with Mia uh, objects only, with only a few loans from our uh, colleagues from the National Museum, uh, with really astounding uh, jewelries from the courts and from uh, from uh, ethnographic jewelry, and then concluding with. Um, um, with Qatar jewelry and the influence of Indian jewelry and Qatar jewelry. So this was uh, curated by Dr. Tara Desjardins and honestly it was very, very, it has become very beautiful and was very popular. Then this is a little sad and this is an exhibition curated by Dr. Hubert Bari and Dr. Munya Shikhab Abudaya. It's an exhibition they worked on for I think three years minimum on Sheikh Saud. Sheikh Saud was of course the um, the person responsible for the collection of the uh, Qatar Museum's uh, general collections. And it's a, it's a huge exhibition that shows the diversity of his taste, of his, of his mindset, of his uh, interests. And also, of course, it shows the diversity of Qatar Museum's collection. So it starts with the natural history, goes to Egypt, uh, and uh, it, jewelry objects. I just, for those, because now it, it's so sad because we had to postpone it. It's now open. It, it's a magnificent exhibition. And of course, um, there, were, there are hardly people see it. So the only solution is to go and, and buy, a, uh, buy a catalog. Uh, um, and it's still on until uh, mid-April and maybe, um, I don't know, maybe Corona stops tomorrow and then you can all come and visit. It's, um, it's very sad, I have to say. So these are some of the programs, for example, Year of Culture with the sponsors, the first sponsor ever for, for, for Museum of Islamic Art. Uh, this was a group of artists that went to India and were inspired by Indian art and produ we produced this nice exhibition um, in our atrium. This was, you know, this was a shopping event with sustainable um, clothing from with some select um, um, some select uh, producers from India, also for the Year of Culture uh, last year. Uh, we had this uh, very nice uh, uh, programs on, you know, on the jewelry here with two. Uh, 
uh, Amrapali from India and um, the, the jeweler from, from Qatar with two young Qatari lady designers. Uh, it was extremely interesting evening. This is our head of learning and outreach and honestly without him nothing would work. Uh, we have so many, uh, you know, we have nights over, sleepovers, we have a painting exhibition on the right, you can see there is an ambassador's program on, uh, you enact, um, uh, you, they go to, they come to, it's always with the exhibitions, they come to the exhibition, they're inspired and up, uh, up there you can see a group of young men, these are the, uh, the young Turks uh, in, <laughs> in, in Istanbul. Uh, and of course, on the right below, you see the ladies doing jewelry. And then we have had a lot of talks over all these years, and this is just a few selection of them. Uh, we have uh, other talks, and here you can see Sheikha Nasser, who is the deputy director of curatorial affairs, uh, this, in this case on women and cultural leadership. Then we have regular concert with the Qatar Philharmonic Orchestra. We have also regular filming from the Doha Film Institute. Uh, and this was a very nice uh, performance with Kivork Murat and Kinan Azme for the Syria exhibitions. Um, um, basically, uh, they are based Syrian artists that are based in New York. And finally, of course, also the park is open for other events like the Uridu telephone marathon starts and finishes at Mia. So, so I mean, this is just sort of things from the last three years, and I think this has um, increased enormously. So, I, I finally want to come into to the last part, which is Mia looking into the future. And the reason why I am in Qatar is uh, basically because. Uh, uh, Her Excellency Sheikha Mayasar uh, wanted uh, to change uh, uh, some things in the museum and uh, change the visitor trail and change and upgrade, um, uh, yeah, upgrade the museum and make it fit for the World Cup, of course. Um, the museum has, um, uh, as you've seen, it's, it's, it's become, it's, it was like, so it, or it is still like a treasure box. You have these beautiful objects uh, that don't tell a story. So she wanted a, a, a different kind of a museum that teaches more about the background of the museum. And, um, and, but this is not the only thing. So I'll show you just a few pictures. So one of the things is also that uh, Mia needs an upgrade in security, for example. So we will change. Um, the entrance uh, that needs to be upgraded in regard to the, the, um, the, the coming visitors with the, um, with the uh, World Cup. Uh, so we also will include new signage uh, and electronic signage, which hasn't been there. There will be an upgrade in the commercial facilities. So we will have a new bookshop, um, the cafe, uh, probably that's not quite clear yet. Uh, we will include a new uh, area for telling the story of the making of Mia, because as, uh, there are so many tourists, but also for people in Qatar, it's really interesting to learn how this museum was ever built. And there is nothing on this right now in the museum. Then we will have a comprehensive visitor trail. Um, and um, we will divide the two floors of Mia into, uh, you know, into a new storyline. The floor below will be on the beginnings of Islam. And we uh, will have a very strong section also on the religion. So we start with the Quran and, and work into art. And then we will, this one is the, um, is the gallery uh, which will talk about the Islamic society so you can see here this Hajj textile and we have pilgrimage books. We will talk about learning. And then the other section is the sort of the spread of Islam. So it's sort of the more historical approach spread in the Arab world then going to the East and going to the West and in the upper floors you go um, and have a journey from East to West or West to East. So, so you know, we have now gallery numbers and pe people are supposed to follow a certain trail. 
this, for example, is a topic, this is, is the learning and we talk about madrasa schools. Uh, that's actually quite a new approach for um, the whole sciences and learning. We put this into the side of the religion because uh, it's, it's uh, and not so much as other museums do, that they always say it's something in between the ancient cultures and the Renaissance, that we really will want to put it into the context of, um, of the Islamic religion, actually, because it is learning uh, is extremely important, schools are important, and even, you know, nowadays Education City is part of the same concept that you really should strive uh, for more in your life. Um, and, um, and this is, for example, this. Then, of course, we will become more family friendly. In fact, this is one of the main things uh, Sheikha Mayasa wants, and uh, we always have to work on this. Um, because, of course, as, uh, it's, uh, it's not that easy to have a museum that is, hasn't been family friendly at all to now turn it to family friendly. So we will introduce a lot of new experiences. We will introduce smelling, we introduce sound, and of course, we will introduce a lot of um, ways where people can try out things like a new astrolabe, for example, and you can um, discover this. It's very important for us that the content is behind all of this. So we don't want just to keep children busy, but we really want them also to, to learn and to understand um, uh, certain concepts. And this is uh, uh, something, uh, this is uh, our room, which is of course not as beautiful as the Aleppo room in Berlin, but it's from Damascus and it's, it's, it's a very nice room that was acquired years ago. And uh, it was restored by um, uh, the German conservator, Akashas, who is sort of one of the leading uh, conservatives um, for these kind of rooms. Uh, we will include this in our new Ottoman gallery. Uh, here is a detail. Please, these are not the final, final versions. Uh, I think they will be extremely popular and will actually, um, uh, this is our biggest feat because as you probably saw that we haven't really in the other ones, we don't change too much. I mean, we don't start changing the interior that we keep the showcases and we keep uh, more or less the same architecture. I would also like to add that we, in fact, you, um, uh, we will be working with the same architects that uh, IMP was working at with Wilmot because we felt um, that we should really um, honor our place and use the same architects that, you know, when there are changes, because it's, it's actually a very beautiful museum and it should still be, we should keep the style. This is also not the final version, but um, this is um, to say that we are also will be introducing two new galleries, one um, for the um, for the exchange with China and the, uh, the Indian Ocean trade, and we will have another gallery completely new uh, dedicated to Southeast Asia. Um, because of course here in Qatar, we are um, in the middle of uh, all of this and we have a lot of people coming from this part of the world and we felt they should be represented in the museum so we in fact acquired even quite a few objects for this part yes and this is one um, we also introduced two special rooms i mean craftsmanship uh, please apologize is a little bit old-fashioned word but um, we also include one uh, on arms and armor because arms and armor like jewelry actually uh, is very popular in this region. And then we have this horse and um, the horse is, it's, I have to say that our ladies curators all wanted to get rid of the horse, the horse because ladies are not so interested in arms and armor, but um, it's one of our favorite objects in the museum with, with the visitors. So we keep it and this will tell the story of Arms and Armour and how it started, but also how Arms and Armour were appreciated and uh, you know, were pieces of jewelry also. So it's not only about war and um, all of this, but it's also a history of technology. We will have another gallery devoted to manuscripts and the production of manuscripts. Um, and that's our two. Uh, to new galleries. Yes, and then finally, we also, of course, will include new media. Um, we will have graphics, new graphics. We will have new types of screens, not too much uh, 
because they shouldn't overtake the whole um, the whole atmosphere, but still they allow us to have in-depth uh, information about certain topics throughout throughout the gallery. Yeah, and last but not least, you see this is uh, uh, um, quite interesting. When we now uh, collected everything together, we have realized that the objects we chose, 70% have not been in the galleries before. So um, um, some of them, uh, of course, we will keep you know, some of the main objects, but and of course we will rotate, but it's nice to also bring out other parts of the collection. Yeah, I think this is it. This is uh, just the final pieces. Um, I, I hope you had a little um, idea about our museum and uh, please, uh, I will be more than happy to, to answer any questions. Hello? Wonderful. Thank you so much, Dr. Julia, for this fascinating overview, not only on Mia, but also uh, Qatar in terms of the past and the future. I want to step back and ask you um, a question. A lot of our viewers are interested to learn more about your background uh, before coming to Qatar and resuming your role as a director um, of the Museum of Islamic Art in Qatar. So can you share a little bit about your background? Um, and what intrigued you actually to take um, interest in Islamic art? Oh, that's a so difficult question. That's so long ago. I don't think I can answer this anymore. But, <laughs> but I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm Islamic. I'm, I studied Islamic uh, art history and archaeology, and I, uh, I, I worked. Uh, you know, since early time, I worked in this field. I started uh, as an intern in the Museum of. Islamic art, just right after school, I think. Uh, there was, Berlin was still divided at the time, uh, but I also worked as an intern in the Victorian Albert Museum. And uh, well, then I finished my studies. I worked in, a lot in Syria. In fact, most of my professional life uh, was, uh, I was working as an archeologist in Syria. And uh, then I worked uh, in the Museum of Islamic Art in Berlin, and this is from where I came. Uh, I worked there for 10 years, and, uh, and I, this is from where I came to Doha, basically, yeah. Wonderful. If I may ask you, Dr. Julia, to turn on your camera, I'm sure everyone wants to oh, see that after your presentation. It's off? I don't know. So sorry. <laughs> no worries. We're all learning. It doesn't work. It says they cannot recognize the camera. I don't know why. This is maybe the, this is Qatar. I don't know. No, but it worked before, no? Yeah. No, but now I cannot open it. It's impossible. Um, maybe it will resume in a few minutes, but we will just. Sorry, I'm really sorry, but it just doesn't work. No. No worries. So then we will just go on with our next questions. Um, yes, please. Yeah, and I want to ask about the most common misconception from your view um, that the public has on Islamic art. And uh, what are what is your role as the director of Museum of Islamic Art and the institution, the museum itself, and kind of demystifying these misconceptions? I don't know whether they they uh, there are that's a very difficult question actually because I don't <laughs> know what is uh, wrong and what is right and what is a right uh, idea about Islamic art or what is not a right uh, yeah it's very difficult but the Islamic art of course uh, if you put it like this I mean people fight about the name and is there Islamic art to start with what is Islamic art is it a right word or is it not a right word but basically if you assume it's the art which is from, uh, you know, is the art that was produced in the sort of broad Middle East, uh, then there are so much interesting things about Islamic art. You know, it's not only about religion, of course, it's also about, about culture, it's about uh, palaces, it's about power, it's about economic, uh, 
uh, then uh, you know some people there are some people who think art is only something which you know sort of the best quality uh, of course uh, other people think material culture also belongs to this and uh, i probably there is a mixture of everything but i i think you can tell nice stories about the history uh, here in qatar you see this is something which is extremely important to us that we tell a story that is important for us here in Qatar uh, uh, and not for, let's say, for Paris. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, I think museums, uh, first of all, serve the local um, population and uh, the, the audience and the meaning. So one of the important things is that we want to tell the story from the Qatari perspective and not say from the New York perspective. Uh, you see, you can have history, you can have, you have a look at history, let's say the First World War. If you have, if you read British people about the First World War and English, uh, German people, they have different stories about the First World War. While if you have, you know, about Islamic history, of course, when you tell it from the um, Qatari or Arab perspective, you might have a different perspective than you will tell the same story from, let's say, Italy or, or Europe. Yes, and this is, was very important. We wanted we want to start from here and we also wanted to open up to the, to the east uh, and not only to the west. Uh, that was, that's why we include, for example, Southeast Asia and, and, and this because uh, it's a perspective. All, all of this is always uh, how you look at things. Yeah. There's nothing wrong or right. I don't think there is, a, you cannot uh, speak about it like this. Absolutely. Sorry, it's still not working. Now you don't see me. It doesn't, I'm sorry. We can see but, your name and we hear you clearly. So, um, yeah, but it's blocked. <laughs> yeah, no worries. Um, I also wanted to ask um, as a professional expert and enthusiast of Islamic art and culture, can you tell us a little bit about your um, experience living in Qatar? as an Arab and Muslim country? Oh, Qatar is very mixed, as you know. I mean, I think that I've never seen such a place so international like Qatar, of course. Qatar, everyone lives in Qatar. Uh, you have, of course, people from Qatar, Qataris that live in Qatar, but then you have such a big community of people from the East, from, the, I mean, honestly, from everywhere. You see this, by the way, in the restaurants, you can eat basically every food. Uh, you want to. You can go to, for Mexican food, you can go for Tibetan food, you can go for Filipino food, and uh, so it's uh, it's very uh, nice uh, from this respect to, to be in such a place. The only problem now is Corona, of course, uh, because then you cannot travel so much, And uh, but that's, again, this is a problem for everyone in, in the world, I guess, no? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I want to also ask a question, um, you know, everyone knows, and you mentioned earlier when we started the webinar that uh, this year and in September, um, the Qatar US uh, Year of Culture was announced. Yeah. And I just want to take a minute um, to thank Her Excellency Sheikh Hamayas, the chairperson of Qatar Museums, and also His Excellency Sheikh Mishal bin Hamid Al Thani, the uh, ambassador of Qatar to the US. For inviting uh, CAKE, for inviting our institute to be part of the Year of Culture and this um, really exciting um, cultural exchange between the two countries. Um, you mentioned that the Freer, Freer, sorry, the Freer and Sackler Museum uh, will host an exhibition uh, this year from uh, Mia. And uh, can you tell us a little bit more about that exhibition? Um, and other plans that you might have in store for uh, 2021? Well, we, uh, 2021 for Mia basically is the relaunch. We will be building, we will be changing our museum. So we will start uh, actually now uh, very soon. Uh, the, we, the, it's out for tender, which is amazing. Uh, we all know this since basically a week or two. So it's all agreed upon. We start. Um, uh, we just finished the Sheikh Saud exhibition and we will be mainly concentrating on changing all the galleries, which is a lot of work. So for this year, uh, the Museum of Islamic Art will not be able to do so much for the year of culture than, for example, in previous years, because we just cannot do the full program. So we concentrate on our collaboration with the Freya Gallery and with Masumi Farhat and Simon Rettich, who will um, 
curate a textile exhibition, um, uh, uh, Iranian textile exhibition, and they have chosen very beautiful objects from our collection, including some paintings. Um, and um, this will be already a feat uh, considering Corona. Uh, I think the Qatar Museums this time, we will not have very many. I think we might be the only uh, exhibition coming this time from Qatar because of the the, the difficulties you have, you're sending objects, it's, uh, it's, it's quite something. And I think even for the free, it will be the first exhibition coming from outside uh, after, I think they're still closed actually. So, so uh, we really look forward to this. And at the same time, we want to exchange with the free, we will have staff exchange. Uh, uh, we want to work on online exhibitions and we also want to hopefully uh, engage in our, you know, um, how can I say this is, um, well, we want to send some of our young uh, curators over there to learn. That's, that's one of the main points and also to uh, exchange in collection management. So there is so sort of, you know, sort of museum work basically so that there is an exchange. And then of course, uh, uh, Museum of Islamic Art very interested in long-term relationships and we hope to build on more activities in the future. That's wonderful. Um, uh, and uh, I, I might also say this will not happen this year, but we are um, we will we are also working on a collaboration with LACMA. I can also see that Linda is mm -hmm. participating at this talk, and uh, this will take a little longer while. But we already started working on this uh, uh, for uh, for an exhibition that LACMA is organizing, and will be sending over to Ria. And um, we really look forward to this as well. Absolutely. And uh, we're very honored also to host you again, Dr. Julia, in April. And LECMA and the Freer and Sackler, the Met, um, and the Museum of Fine Arts in Houston, all the experts and the curators will join us um, in kicking off our museum series. And we're really excited um, to talk about you know, Islamic art and culture, especially also next year is Qatar's uh, Doha will be uh, the capital of Islamic culture. So two kind of big events that uh, will definitely be, uh, will put the Museum of Islamic Art in the spotlight. And we're very excited to be part of these collaborations. Um, uh, we are getting a lot of questions about the uh, 2022 World Cup. Um, a lot of people are curious, and I know you touched a little bit um, about that topic and the museum's kind of uh, preparations for the World mm. Cup. Can you tell us a little bit more how, uh, considering even the World Cup uh, 2022 will be a family friendly event and it's a regional event for all the Arab countries. Um, so can you tell us a little bit about Mia's preparations for hosting all the thousands of visitors who will be coming to um, Mia in uh, two years? Yes, this will be quite a challenge, I suppose. Yeah, I mean, this will be a challenge for all Qatar. But honestly, Qatar is working on this since since my arrival, basically. Uh, that, that's the major event to come. And I think all the uh, institutes and museums and everything in Qatar is exactly working for this Qatar museums. They have a special committee that uh, do nothing else but um, prepare this event basically so of course uh, we will need to ch i mean from operation wise but also from uh, from uh, our programming uh, we will have special exhibitions with qatar museums qatar museums has decided to put on exhibitions uh, that um, are um, uh, showcasing the middle east so uh, we were all asked to um, but that's of course easy for us, but also for the Museum of Modern Art or Orientalist Museum that they really do something on which is important for the Middle East. And we actually, apart from our relaunch, we are planning a Baghdad exhibition, uh, which is again, quite a challenge uh, because it's going to be a very big exhibition uh, uh, to, uh, to introduce the city of Baghdad and its history. Great, that's wonderful. Um... I want to ask a question that we also have here um, about, especially that you touched on Qatar Foundation and you talked about kind of the expansion and kind of the, the how art and culture is really flourishing in Qatar in the most recent years. 
um, how have the perception and interest in museum and art studies in Doha been developing in, in recent years? I would say, especially since 2017, at least, um, since you moved there. How, how the, the, again, I, can you ask this question again? Sure. Um, we're intrigued to know more about the local perception and kind of interest in art and culture studies. Oh, and yeah. For example, we know that uh, Qatar Foundation has Virginia Commonwealth University, uh, the School of Arts, uh, which has a lot of disciplines focused on, you know, different art history. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, well, no, 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 it has, it's, it's, uh, the, the art is, uh, plays an enormous role, and I think this is uh, very strongly connected with um, uh, Sheikha Mayasa being a big uh, uh, figure for, especially for the ladies, no, but also for the men. I mean, I, honestly, I think uh, she's such a, a star in in this country that uh, and with her power that she uh, introduced this art basically everywhere i mean it's through the university is one thing but it's also through the private sector now i mean we have now so many new galleries coming up uh, and with the new uh, area of Musharraf, uh, of course, uh, which has is, is such a trendy place. No, I mean we have now all these new galleries coming up, and uh, we just opened uh, unwasted land, and um, uh, there is a lot of. It's more about modern art. Uh, I think it's a lot of. It's mostly to do with modern art. It's modern art production, but uh, so much all in Katara. Uh, uh, lots of things going on. Design, I think design is rather strong in, uh, in Qatar, um, maybe even more than the arts. There's a lot of uh, to do with the, the design, interior design. I think also the architecture changes, interior architecture changes. Uh, just think of these coffee places, no? I mean, there's one that's getting more interesting than the other. So, uh, um, yeah, it's 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 important to see this because it's not only art uh, as 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 a panel piece on it. It's it's more as a way of living actually, and that has changed immensely in in the three years I've been here. Yeah, indeed. Um, I want to also ask. Uh, this will be our last question for today. How do you see the role of Mia and Qatar in the world of museums today, locally or regionally and internationally? Oh, um, how, <laughs> uh, well, I think Mia as being the sort of the biggest museum or of its kind in, in the entire region, it plays an enormously important role. Uh, it, uh, there is no other museum like this. And uh, one thing we want to be with this museum is different to the museums in the West, for example, because uh, we are in the region and we want to be a regional, regional museum, but with international outreach. Yeah, so because we are very much interested in serving the community here, being a museum for this, for this country and for the region. Uh, but of course, uh, you know, stretching our arms out to the rest of the world. That's wonderful. I want to thank you, Dr. Julia, for your time and for your wonderful presentation today. Um, I know having a virtual programming in different time zones can be always challenging, both technically and in terms of logistics. So we're really appreciative of your time today. And I also want to thank our viewers who joined us today and um, they showed great interest um, in the topic and uh, asked so many different questions. Um, about Mia and about yourself and about Qatar in general. And um, I just wanna invite everyone to join us this Friday. We have another expression series uh, with artist and uh, master calligrapher and sculptor, Sabah Al Erbini, um, who's also joining us virtually. And I'm actually sitting in front of one of his paintings here as we are hosting um, our first exhibition in our uh, new headquarters at Transcendent Text exploring universal values through Islamic calligraphy. Um, and I also wanna thank our sponsors for uh, allowing us to uh, continue our mission and uh, um, showing the great values of uh, art and culture. And uh, thank you again, Dr. Julia. Uh, we're always uh, happy to host you and to work with you and Mia's team and QM at large. And I hope we will see everyone next time.
Take care. Thank you so much and thank you everyone for coming and, and please apologize this uh, with the video and um, being so unable with this, uh, you know, after all these months of lockdown, <laughs> I still don't know, but thank you very much for hosting this and uh, being able to come. Thank you so much. Thank you. Take care. Ma'asalaamu. Wa alayasimek.